Obviously, everybody talks about Baylor's uh, uh, offense, but as you look at them defensively, they're, uh, I mean, they're, they're a very good defense. Uh, they're led up front with, uh, by a defensive end, uh, Oakman, who's uh, about 6'9", 280, I think he's listed as, and uh, is a very, very good player. Reminds you a lot of a couple of defensive ends we played against Oregon uh, a few months ago. Uh, they're not uh, complicated by what they do, but at the same time, they're very good at what they do. They're uh, uh, a team that's uh, uh, done blitz a lot, but again, they're, they're very detailed. They're very uh, uh, disciplined in what they do defensively, and, and they're good. They're good, so it's going to be a challenge for us, bottom line. Coach Bowman, this one's for you. The last time in a big-time bowl game like this, you played a team that explosive. Different offense, but as explosive was Miami in the national championship game. How key is it going to be to establish the run simply from the standpoint of getting your defense a break because of their high up, up-tempo offense? I think that there's uh, these people put some pressure on you to be consistent on offense, to stay on the field. And I don't necessarily – think that it's nec- the run is the only way to do it. There has to be some balance. But, you you know, when you go to the pass, you better be consistent in the pass. And, and I think if you if you went with the approach that you're just going to run the ball down these guys' throats, I don't think it's going to work. You know, and as, as we've talked before, there better be some kind of threat of balance uh, to make both aspects of the game work or it's too easy to get shut down. Media and the pundits might build this game as a the, you know big offense from Baylor against the defense of the Spartans, but from an offensive pair of minds, how do you make sure that you guys can steal the attention if the two powers you know kind of cancel each other out? I guess uh, I, mean, I don't know. I'm not sure it's any different than, than a lot of games we play. I mean, uh, you know, we've sort of uh, just sort of did our thing all year long, and I think it's just a matter of us going out and, and, and uh, showing what we can do on the field. Uh, I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, our defense deserve, you know, played played excellent. Uh, I heard Pat talking about uh, this year. I mean, they were a very good defense this year. Our defense was obviously excellent last year. So they, they deserve, our defense deserves uh, all the credit. Uh, Baylor's number one offense coming into the game. So obviously they deserve, uh, you know, a lot of recognition as well. And uh, we just sort of go about our business, I guess. And, uh, you know, we use it as motivation uh, to our guys to just, uh, you know, they got to make some noise and make a name for themselves. And uh, that's sort of how we approach every week. So I don't think it's any different, uh, probably other than the fact that we are going against, you know, number one offense in the nation. Dave, with the success you guys have had in these bowls in the last couple of years, can you pinpoint anything as far as how you prepare that's allowing you to do that? Uh, we're, you know, I think a couple of years back, we've sort of gone to uh, not – installing an entire game plan right away you know like you, if you're going through a, a normal game week you know we try and get something in on Tuesday and then finish the game plan on Wednesday and then you sort of <coughs> polish it on Thursday and we've sort of gone a couple weeks back or a couple years back I should say uh, of being a little bit slower and in installing things so by the time you actually get to your bowl site and you have you know four or five more practices whatever it is it's not old stale stuff that we've been doing forever so we try and sort of Put it in as pieces, and then we think it's helped to keep guys fresh and keep guys a little bit more locked in over the years. Other questions for Dave or Jim? Dave, I just wonder if you could evaluate, you know, kind of Cook's season to this point. Um, how much did he grow from last year to this year? How much more does he still have to do? Well, I think his, his growth from last year to this year has been uh, has been very good, very strong. I mean, he's 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 come along as a leader. He's come along as a uh, as a, a game manager, uh, knowing our offense and being able to execute our offense. Uh, so I think he's grown leaps and bounds throughout the course of the year. You see him. I mean, it's been up and down like every quarterback throughout the course of the year. Up and down like every offense throughout the course of the year. But I think overall, he's he's executed and he's had a lot of big plays for us. Um, where he where he has to go from here, I think is uh, I, I still think he's got a big upside, uh, and I think that uh, 
just from a, uh, a read progression type deal, it's going to lead to everybody talk during the season about his footwork and so forth. And I think it, that all relate, relates back to his, his uh, progression and his pass game progression because I think as he's comfortable with that, I think his feet can sort of follow suit. Uh, so I think if, you know, if, if he makes that improvement or that, that's the biggest thing he can improve on, if he makes that, he's going to be you know, much better off. Do you think he's ready for the NFL if he if he decided to leave early right now? I think that's a decision for the the experts to make, the NFL experts. I'm just a college football coach that they can make that decision. But uh, I think he's, I think he's a very good quarterback, and I think he's got uh, some improvement that he can he can make in front of him. For both you guys, I asked Pat kind of this similar question. What have you seen from your younger offensive guys and even the current guys? When, when you guys have to simulate these up-tempo offenses, there's been a few of them this year. What have you seen from, from those guys on your side of the ball? And what do you see is that in terms of the offense in the future for Michigan State? Go ahead, Jim. Roll with it. <laughs> I think one of the things that may help us is we're not one of the rest of the guys. We're not one of the spread-out crews. We're one of the old-fashioned crews so that everyone has to prepare for us a little bit differently than they do other people all week. Um, <clears throat> I think that's a benefit for us. I think that uh, another thing that we've done a good job is have a great variety in all the different things that we do and the types of runs that we do and the types of passes that we do. And, um, and I think that puts some pressure on the defense preparing all week. Uh, for things that we do. Um, so, you know, there's there's benefits to uh, the up-tempo type of things. I understand that. There's There might be more benefits to it when it's a changing tempo as opposed to being one steady pace the whole time. So, um, you know, we kind of are who we are right now. And, and haven't really talked much about the future. That being said, uh, is there a team that they have faced that they might say, hey, this team is, emulates Michigan State and some of the things that they do? Or are you guys kind of, as you kind of mentioned, the change of pace? Is this a team that they're not necessarily familiar to seeing? Yeah, I don't, I don't, think, they're, I don't think they've faced a team this year like us. Uh, some teams maybe resemble certs, certain parts of what we do, but – Again, that's that's not unique. The, to, I mean, every game we go throughout the course of the season, I think we always look for, okay, here's a team we want to break down, here's a team we want to break down, here's a team. And it's hard to find those teams that actually play with a quarterback under center and a fullback behind them, which, uh, you know, might be a little bit of a dinosaur, but uh, it's worked okay for us. Not everybody does co-coordinators. Michigan State, obviously, though, is one of them. And how have you two impacted each other? How have each of you, I'd like you both to address this, but how has Dave in, in, impacted you, Jim? And how has Jim impacted you, Dave? Because so, obviously it's working. Oh, uh, you know, the, you know, as I, as I said at the banquet, I'm kind of the old new guy or the new old guy, you know. So, uh, and, and, it's, and it's a great thing to be here, you know. Uh, there was a, a lot of camaraderie with the staff that I had before I got here. Know these guys a little bit. Know some I've worked with. So, um, you know, it's, for me, it's certainly been a lot easier this year than last year. You know, because there was a there was a degree of learning. There was a degree of fitting in. There was a degree of uh, uh, you know trying to employ some of the things that I've done in the past to try to help. You know, which is which is the bottom line, just trying to help. You know, because the wheel wasn't broke, that's for sure. You know, the, the thing was just to try to see how you can add to the picture. You know, and um, so uh, it's certainly been a lot of fun. It's been very rewarding. Um, and, and um, you know, Dave's done a great job leading the show. And uh, and it, it's, it's fun for me just to be in, in a role of trying to assist however I can. I'll start out by saying one of the things that uh, Bowles did not bring with him, and that's an ego. And that's, uh, I think that's something that we've always tried to, you know, in our staff room, in our offensive staff room, we're always uh, trying to take everybody's ideas and, and uh, toss it around and 
see what sticks and throw out the ones that don't stick. But uh, uh, Bowles from day one showed up and just, just, as he said, wanted to help. And uh, I think that was important to be able to fit into what we've done here and what we want to continue to do. At the same time, I think, I mean, you guys have seen it and you guys have asked me over and over again about some of the different things, the unique things. You go back to two years ago, we said, we want to tweak some things. We need to incorporate some new ideas. And a lot of that was, was Bowles bringing those ideas to fruition. And, uh, you know, it's all us putting our, our, our minds together. But uh, uh, Bowles had experience with some of the, some of the things we've done. And uh, I think what he's been able to add to our offense has been obvious to you guys. A lot of that uh, is credit to him. That's time for one more. Matt. Jim, over to your left. I want to ask you about the, the offensive line. Again, you've dealt with various injuries at different spots throughout the year, yet you have one of the better running backs. You have give up very few sacks. Just, I guess, talk about the, the way that unit has played all year and how they progress throughout the season. Well, you know, the big, a big reason that the way they've played is because the way Mark Staten coaches them. He does, he does a great job with that, no question about it. And, and we've been very fortunate. Some of our injuries that you speak of have been rather timely, you know, where uh, we've been able to – to shift the guy over and, and, and make up for, for, the, for the loss for that moment, and, and maybe it changes a few weeks later. Um, you know, I think it was a, a big benefit for us to get Connor Cruz back when he was out those first few weeks or a month of the season. You know, uh, that, that was a big aspect to be, to be back. But the way Mark coaches those guys are very flexible up front um, from position to position, side to side. And, and when you do that, you learn a lot more about the entire football game and the whys and awares of what's going on. And, uh, you know, they've done a really good job in that regard. And, and as you mentioned, they've done a great job pass protection. Now, that goes into a lot of different things, though. I mean, that goes into Connor getting rid of the ball. That goes into running backs protecting. That goes into guys getting, you know, running good routes. That's just the overall aspect of, of the football game. But they're part of the game. They've done very well and adjusted very well to things that they've been seeing. Um, and, and and as you can see, they've done a good job in, in the running game, you know. And, and and again, part of it, I'll mention again, though, I think the variety of the different ways that we run the ball help us. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thank you.